In the jungle, the mighty jungle, Reed and his troops will roar tonight. We know of our top four. Arnett and Waterhouse are true to next round. I'll tell you how they did it on today's quarterfinal leg two review show. Yeah, people, welcome back to Jampiel Fan, and it was a spectacular end to the quarterfinal round as Arnett and Waterhouse had edged their opponents into the next round. Uh, this is coming after a very even first leg matches last week, but you know, there has to be a victor, and we got two victors here in Waterhouse and Arnett. So let me go straight into it and let it know how it was done. We're starting, of course, with the Portmore versus Arnett leg two matchup. Okay, so of course we're going to start with the lineup for this one as we were just going to see how the tactical shakeup is going to come about after these two has basically drawn their last two games, especially a very even one all draw last week. First up was Philip Williams. We were we were asking him what will he do, what what changes will he make, and honestly, it didn't make much as expected. One of the small changes that was expected, of course, Shavon Walsh came up top in Tram Barnett, but the big big change actually came in goal. As stalwart number one keeper Tyrone Williams was not in the starting lineup and he was replaced by another Williams. That was Benjamin Williams, who only played 11 matches this season, got the starting goal. I couldn't get a clear understanding if there's a knock to Tyrone Williams, but he was on the bench, so it's an interesting shakeup by Philip Williams. While Xavier Gilbert, he made the bigger of the changes, as I stated. He actually removed Arbine from the starting 11 and brought in Shepard. But you would think that with an extra midfielder, there would it be a change in formation. And yes, he did. He got rid of his favored 4 3 3 that he played with the majority of the season and went with a 4 4 2. So this allowed Kaim Dixon and Fabian Reed to play through the middle up top. So an interesting shake up by Xavier Gilbert as he probably have seen some chinks in the armor of the Portmore defense last week and probably find the formula. Anyway, the game started off well a bit fierce and Arnegans got an early chance from a free kick from the left hand side at the top of the box. Willis has become the main free kick taker as of late and he's the one that lined this up and he and he knuckled the ball over the wall but not under the bar and he crashes off the top of the bar and went, went out of safety. An early warning shot from the junglist as they were really coming into the game hungry for this one. Pomer eventually settled and they eventually got Marshall onto the ball, carved up a chance on his left foot but he didn't quite get through. Shavon Walsh as I said was taking the role of Barnett who did all the dirty work last week and while he wasn't having the exact same effect, he was definitely throwing his weight around. But I felt well, Willis was having a good game and more on that later as he was doing his best. At this point the game was coming a bit chippy, not necessarily a super aggressive but with some needless falls were really happening on both sides, breaking up the play, the flow of momentum for both teams as well as the game has now resided into a somewhat of a lull. No clear cut chance was created on either end and the both teams were having difficulty to really get past each other's back line. Until out of nowhere we saw a roll reversal where a ball was floated into the top half of the ant defense where Marshall ran on and flicked on a ball for Shavon Walsh to run behind the defense and while he may not be the fastest player out there, he did manage to get the ball onto his feet and was approached by Edwards but couldn't get the ball past him. A good chance for Walsh who probably was probably thinking maybe he could have run the keeper there but nonetheless a good save by Edwards. That seemed to work up on it a bit, they start to knock on the ball much better after that I was trying to carve the chances of the own towards the end of the game. Kareem Dixon was looking much better at playing through the middle, he had much more freedom to get things going and it seemed like switching to 4-4-2 was the best choice for him but not necessarily the best choice for Fabian Reed, who was largely invisible in that first half as there was not much balls coming from wide to, since he switched the formation as the four midfielders were having a bit of a tough time trying to work their way through the crowded midfield. But they did control that midfield because they did crowd it out uh, Portmore team in that first half who really couldn't get nothing going. Marshall himself who was spectacular in the first half in the first game really could not get much going. Each time he touched the ball he would seem like it was crowded and Morrison who was in the midfield to help him out did his best but they just could not contend with the four on it midfielders. Just, and just like that the first half came to a halt and it remained in 0-0. So of course it's kind of started I will hope things will pick up and it did it almost immediately. This time Marshall found himself into the box on his right side, on the right hand side and he did well to cut the ball back on his fave left foot and after he got the shot the ball he couldn't curl enough to find the low end of the goal. So he a good chance there for Pomer once more. But then one of the craziest moments in the match happened. 
a ball came in from the left for Arnett. I found Kaim Dixon on, on mark in the penalty box. He did well to beat Williams, but not the post. As the ball, as the ball actually ricocheted back to him on his right foot this time, and he snatched at it and actually hit the under underbelly of the crossbar and see the ball hit back down to the ground and away for safety. Unbelievable chance missed by Arnett and Kaim Dixon. Some bad luck for the young man who was screaming to the heavens at his misfortune. Nobody in the state could not believe he did not score there. But you know, these are the breaks that happen in such tight games sometimes. So another warning shot for Pomer, but they didn't exactly wake up really. As straight from a corner after that, the ball was floated in. I found Faber Reed finally a good header to the bottom left corner, but was much equally impressively by Benjamin Williams. A good save by Williams, who should give him confidence after it was a weird choice to put him in, but maybe you know he impressed in training. It remained 0 0 at that point, but Arnett was in full flow. I was trying the best to really eke out the first goal. But it did leave them a bit stretched at the end a bit. Marshall was getting more and more onto the ball as his link up with Chevron Walsh was coming more and more into the fray. And one such play happened where Marshall got away from the left wing and did his usual job by getting past the defender and dinked a good ball into the six yard box. I see like a sure goal from Walsh who was approaching. And but for some reason it seemed that he couldn't lift flight enough. And the ball sailed over his head and missed the gaping goal. A big chance for Poma when spurning. And Walsh, I guess, tried his best to reach it, but just couldn't make it happen. So now Portmore fired their own wine shot at Ant in response. But it was the right time for Gilbert now who to make the changes and he knew it was a super sub from last week's game. Shea Smith was coming into the game as well as Arbine for Thompson and Dixon. So we think with the extra with two wingers on, Gilbert will return to his 4-3-3. But instead he kept the 4-2-2 and have Arbine playing closer to Fabian and Reed. But it seemed to work a charm because almost immediately from their substitution, the two substitutes linked up and saw Arbine playing Smith who has a chance to get the ball into the goal and find himself one on one at that angle with Williams coming at him and only managed to put the ball just wide. Very close for Shea Smith who again seemed to change the game. And that he did a couple of minutes after that. Again the ball played the ultimate field with a spectacular ding pass with his back of his heel. Shea Smith found Arbine once more in the middle and Arbine gave him one more and no, no Shea Smith was away on the left wing. He only had one target in the middle of course and he found him. A good low cross was placed into the 6 yard box and found a streak in fame and Reed who calmly slotted home past Williams into the goal. Big big goal of course came at the 89th minute and surely it was the dagger that Portman was trying to avoid. Big goal for the junglers and they were on cloud nine and it was just justification for the excellent attacking prowess they were showing in the two matches. 1-0 at this point but there was still chance for Portman to try to out an unlikely equaliser. This time it came from a ball as free kick was floating into the box and he fought a Steve Young in the six yard box free as a bird and he has been having a knack of scoring this season but could, could not get over the header and sit over the bar. Unlucky again for Portmore but big relief for Arnett who lost concentration at the worst time and almost caught off a silly equalizer in the dying moments. And after this blow of the whistle at this point, it was a crucial big win for Arnett of course who now send him in a semi-final clash with Cavalier. Tough going for Portmore who I thought played much better in this game. They didn't sit back as deep as they did in the second half like they did in the first match but they still couldn't muster enough up front to go forward. Barnett did come on in late in the second half to give help to Walsh and Marshall but he playing a different role didn't really muster much. So tough luck for Portmore while Arnett fully deserved the victory after some astute tactical and attacking display. Anyway, go straight into the stats for this one for sure what's going on and that front. All right, so. Pomer has 6 total shots in the entire game compared to 10 from Arnett. As I said, there wasn't much going on in that first half. Pomer only managed 1 shot on target compared to Arnett 3. 5 corners for Pomer, 4 for Arnett, 3 yellow cards went to Arnett when 2 went to Pomer. As the first half was a bit chippy with some silly fouls happening. Yeah, it's a actually a big win for Arnett and I think it all came down to their coach. Well, a lot of you people who are wondering if he's the right person to lead the women national team, while that remained to be seen, but he showed his tactical prowess here where he did play with a 4-4-2 throughout the entire game I seemed to work well. He was especially good with the time of his substitutes as Arbine and Shea Smith once again changed the game for him in the second half. While Portmore and Philip Williams I did state 
that they, for them to get the victory here in this match, they needed a plan B and it was non-existent. Yes, the usual plan does work against Arnett but only worked for so long with Arnett have so much attacking powers on the bench. So something for them to regroup by, uh, Philip Williams did say in the, in the interview afterwards that he may not be back next season which would be a shame because I thought he did push this young team as far as he could. But we will see, I hope he's back. As for Arnett, a great victory and no, they clearly should be one of the teams you must fear in the next round. We talk more about that in Friday's preview show but it'll be interesting to see how they go. Anyway, once again it finishes Portmore 0 and it guns 1. So that is the first quarterfinals where the lower seed toppled that higher seed. So for the second match, would it happen again? Well, Tivoli was coming into this game probably feeling much better after they displayed their usual self in the second half of the first leg against a Waterhouse team who must try to avoid that happening again this time. We'll start with the lineups again. Some big changes for Tivoli first. Nikola Fuller, who I thought was unlucky to miss out in the starting lineup last week, got in from the start this time. And Jerome Wade was not experimenting anymore, really. That Justin Dunn has no lineup is what we were used to lately in that role, in that, in that attacking midfield role right behind Nelson up front. Why Waterhouse? Well, the main man was back, isn't he? Andre Fletcher was fit again and he was starting from the, from the get go. But what was very interesting for Marcel Gale in this one is that he did not bet Gibson, but he kept Gibson with Fletcher and with Mitchell in the lineup. Nikoi Christian was an unlucky man to miss out and it would be an interesting tactical move by Marcel Gale. More on that later. So the game kicked off a bit ferocious and honestly by the fifth minute it was a bit too ferocious as a loose ball saw Fuller and Dallas going for it in a very crunching collision that saw unfortunately, very unfortunately both men substituted. Fuller was the worst for wears as he came off in cruciating pain immediately while Dallas tried to continue the game but unfortunately he could not either as he also left in tears. So you know this is one of those unfortunate things and you know we heard some bad news later on that Fuller has possibly broken his leg. So we really wish a young baller well and a speedy recovery and we're so unfortunate as he finally got his start to have it ended that way. Anyway the game kind of you know me under that bit I think Tivoli was extremely shaken up after that as they were slow on the ball and they seemed to be stuck into first gear. While Waterhouse, while we thought that attacking and intensity they provided in the first match, in the first half in the first match was a fluke, they are proving that it was no fluke and they came up with some increased intensity in this game to match it. Some will say even better as they were really running as hard as I ever seen them this season and after every loose ball and winning almost every duel. At this point, they were basically beating Tivoli at their own game once more. As every time an orange shirt touched a ball, I, there were three yellow shirts around him. But one would argue maybe that what happened to Fuller was such a big destruction as the first goal came well from a distracted captain. Penny could receive the ball close to his own box for a free throw and you know he lost concentration and almost saw the ball go over the line for a corner but he recovered but again he lost concentration and saw he was run down by Mitchell who got the ball past him and was able to set up a free Javain Bryan in the middle of the box. Now the big number 9 you don't normally give him these kind of chances and he was composed before he was able to release that good right footed shot into the back of the net and give Waters a big one the lead. It was for all their hard work and pressing deserved and it also gave Marcel Gill compliments for keeping Mitchell in the game so close with Tivoli. Hopefully this wakes them up, right? As they start to you know, control a bit more of the ball in the middle of the field. Number 7 Horan Morris was playing a bit deeper you know, in the midfield and I thought he was by far Tivoli's best player throughout his game. He was controlling the tempo of the game and was creating chance from deep. One short chance came when he got the ball and was able to float a, just a good ball over to Alton Lewis who found himself free on the right side of the box but was unable to get his shot just under the bar and on a target. So a big chance for Tiffany to get back into it at that point but there were no control in possession as was maybe another tactical move by Marcel Gale was allowing Tiffany to come at them. If you remember in that second half in the first leg, Waterhouse was a bit tired towards the end and was bogged down by the pressing wing box at Tivoli. You see that Marcel Gale have learned his lesson and decided that Waters could not keep up the same pace they were running at throughout the full 90, decided to take periods of break and invited pressure in some spots. And that was one of those cases here by the 38 minute Tivoli was not running the show but was not necessarily creating 
no super clear cut chances. In the previous show, I did call for Andre Fletcher to start because in these kind of moments where they need an outlet ball, I thought Fletcher was the best person for that. But Fuzzy went one step further and have actually Andre Fletcher playing just as a second forward, just underneath Javain Bryan, which allows him the free roll to run into each left and right channels when needs be to pick up the ball. It was working a charm here as the second goal came precisely from this. Mitchell was able to get receive the old head ball, I was able to pass him on then before finding a streak in Javain Bryan who shrugged off Brown before the ball fell to Gibson. One of the best balls I've seen this season was able to float the ball over the Tivoli, the last one in Tivoli defense and found an Andre Fletcher free as a bird on the penalty spot who just like Javain Bryan in the same place calmly took his time before firing off a left footed shot pass happening goal a big big goal i came right before the second half to really kill any spirit for tivoli also justified marcel gate brilliant tactical move by keeping jameson mitchell and fletcher in the park together as all three combined along with javain bryan to cover up this chance jameson especially who i thought was a good game in the first half must be given credit for that kind of ball he played to play such a ball with the outside his right foot on the run to have it that weighted well and accurate could consider being world class. Really one of the best of the year. So at that point 2-0 and Tivoli were already deflated after what happened to Fuller this seemed dismantled at this point. The half time came at the right time for them and they were hoping looking to regroup. Tivoli to the credit came up much stronger as they was hoping to get back in the game right away. Lennox Russell who came into the game for the injured Fuller got down the left hand wing before cutting back on his right and tested Foster in goal. A very good smart save by Foster who is going to be tested way more going down the line. While Walter was who is not exactly playing 11 man in the box, retreated a bit and was now trying to soak up most pressure as they can. They got behind the ball well and they defended so well especially in the middle of the park. Because Justin Dunn who was playing more centrally was still fighting frustrated to get into the game as Delson was doing all he could to try to free up space for him but was not finding much luck. While at the other end, Gibson was running himself into the ground. Him and Javain Bryan was provided that outlet that was missing in the second half of the first match, especially with one chance here where Gibson was able to hold the ball well and laid it out to Daniel Thomas, who did some silky smooth moves to get free at the top of the box and release a curling shot or just right over the bar. Christian did bring some fresh legs to try to break out the play early up the pitch, but Tivoli was still carving up some chances. One just came from a set piece, saw the ball landing in the box onto Justin Dunn who tried to launch a shot at goal but saw the ball actually deflected in front of the goal and find a Wellington who tries to stir it on goal but actually got it onto the post. Bad by Mr. Wellington who could say he's a bit unlucky here, it was a half chance but a chance he just could not miss. Jerome Wade did take off Justin Dunn and brought Morgan in who did bring a bit of a spark in the attacking midfield role. Time was now ticking down for Tivoli now who was getting even more frustrated as Waters was now, as Waters was now playing this with some shrewd tactics and gamemanship as if they were a team straight from South America as they were doing all they could to delay restarts and delay taking himself off the ground each time he got fouled to frustrate Tivoli to no end. Now Tivoli got one more chance to try to get something out of the game because of a free kick outside the box while well, it's lining top and with a good strike at goal but it was getting matched by another great save by Kevin Foster who was having himself a great night and so he parried again out for safety. That was the last chance to really could muster and the whistle blew and water house upset the odds and saw the sixth place team into the next round. Big big win for water house there. Anyway, this look at the stats to show how it shakes down there. Tivoli have 15 total shots compared to Waters 9. Most of those 15 shots came in the second half as Tivoli was trying their best to get back into the game. They had 8 shots on target but again Kemar Foster who was the man of the match repelled everything. 3 shots on target for Waters but they were clinical enough. 6 corners to Tivoli, 5 to Waters. 2 yellow cards for Tivoli, 4 for Waters. Yes, outstanding performance by Waterhouse, I felt. And honestly, this game could be summed up easily. I felt Jerome Wade was out coached by Fuzzy Gale. And I felt Tivoli was outran by Waterhouse. And I felt that their number nine, Javain Bryan, was the better of the two. As Justin Dunn, in the two match, really, was a bit disappointed in the fact that he didn't have much influence in the both legs. So, again, a big victory for Waterhouse just earned. And it finishes again. Tivoli 0, Waterhouse 2. So yeah, that does lead us to what is shaken up for the semi-final matches. 
So what else now goes on to face the defending champions more pleasant in the next round while Arnett, after all the attacking prowess, will go on to take on Cavalier. So, you know, we will preview these games as, as I stated on Friday. But anyway, well, that's where John Pierre will leave it right there. Again, congratulations to Arnett Guns as well as Waterhouse who did not only played well but coaching both games I thought were tactically better. But anyway, I just said to you, see you guys on Friday for the previous show. And for NDS and the Jamaican Premier League, you're already at the right place. Jump fun. YouTube, pick up on yourself.